Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today I'm going to be talking about motion sickness in VR. Now this week I had some comments and questions about motion sickness as it seems a lot of you out there got a VR headset over the holidays. Now this applies to any VR headset regardless of whether you got an Oculus Go, a PSVR or a HTC Vive and motion sickness will affect roughly 4 in 10 of us. Now it seems a lot of you VR newcomers out there are jumping straight into intense games and experiences like Pavlov, Onward and Dirt Rally to name a few. And although these games can be extremely fun, they can be very intense for those that haven't yet got their VR legs. A bit like when Neo wakes up after being pulled from the Matrix, he asks Morpheus why his eyes hurt and Morpheus explains is because you've never used them before. And just like Neo, many of you out there have never ran before without physically moving your body. Your eyes and your brain are convinced that you're moving, but the vestibular system in your inner ear is saying that you're not moving at all. And this causes confusion and motion sickness or simulator sickness, whatever you want to call it. And this sensation of motion sickness actually stems back to the body's instinctual reaction to where the body believes that you've been poisoned and that you're hallucinating and therefore that you should get rid of that poison by vomiting it up. Some lucky few out there don't have a problem with it and can jump straight into intense games and experiences without a problem. But if you're a mere mortal like me, then it might take a little bit of time. I was really susceptible to motion sickness myself when I first got the Oculus DK1 almost four years ago. And I remember jumping straight into a Half-Life 2 VR mod and after around 15 minutes I felt so sick I had to lay down for around four hours to recover. But thankfully I'm here to help you all out. In this video today I'll be giving you some practical advice and tips on how you can prevent motion sickness in virtual reality and start getting the most out of your new VR headset. So without further ado, let's dive in. So my first tip is to ensure that your IPD is set correctly. Now IPD is short for interpupillary distance. This is the distance between your eyes pupils. Now some headsets like the Oculus Go have a fixed IPD to accommodate the average IPD range, but with the Vive, PSVR and Oculus Rift, you'll need to ensure it's set correctly for the most comfortable experience. The next tip is to check out the game's comfort ratings. On the Oculus Rift and Oculus Go, you'll get comfort ratings on the store page of each game, and they'll fall into one of three categories, comfortable, moderate, and intense. Just like I'm showing you in the gameplay of this video, I'll mark each one of these games into the right category, whether it be comfortable, moderate, or intense. Unfortunately, the other platforms such as Steam or PSVR don't have this rating right now, so I would recommend diving into the reviews of the game to see what players are saying about the game's comfort levels. I would love to see in the future a standard where everyone has to adhere to that shows comfort levels of VR games because I think it is really important, especially for VR newcomers. So at first, of course, I'd recommend playing some comfortable games where you don't actually move in game that much. And my favorites to recommend to newcomers are Beat Saber and Super Hot. Both of these games are really fun and don't use any in-game locomotion. Let me know your recommendations for comfortable games to play in the comments down below. Once you're used to playing in VR with comfortable games, then you can work your way up to games that feature teleportation locomotion systems such as Arizona Sunshine and Robo Recall. Both are excellent examples of fun teleportation games. I would also recommend physically turning in your play space when playing games that require you to turn 360 instead of using snap or smooth turning if you can. I know you might get tangled up with wires a little bit, but you'll definitely feel more comfortable. Most VR games out there have comfort settings in the menu, so make sure you go and check them out. Features such as vignetting, which reduces your field of view during movement, can also help you feel more comfortable. Of course, this can come at a cost of immersion. My other advice is, at first, play short sessions of maybe 10 to 15 minutes and take regular breaks. Keep yourself hydrated with plenty of water and maybe use a fan pointed at you whilst in VR to make sure you're keeping cool. So my most important piece of advice, and maybe the one thing if you take anything away from this video, is this. 
and that is if you start to feel hot you're starting to feel like cold sweats or dizziness or nausea don't try to push through it because once you go over the edge with motion sickness there's just no turning back and you'll probably feel rough for hours on end I learned that lesson the hard way, so please don't push through if you're starting to feel the effects. Stop straight away, take a break, get something to drink, get something to eat, and then just wait until all the effects have completely disappeared, and then maybe try again. Because the problem is, if you keep pushing through that sick feeling, in the long term it could cause your brain to associate VR with that sick feeling, and therefore it would make it much, much harder to overcome this in the future. So my final tip of this video is to try some cold ginger ale. Ginger has always been recommended as an alternative medicine for motion sickness, and I found in the early days it really helped me out. Most stores stock it and it's super cheap to pick up, so grab yourself some ginger ale and enjoy some VR. So there we have it, that's some advice and practical tips on how to prevent motion sickness in VR. Let me know if any of these tips were useful to you in the comments down below, I'd love to know. Even if you were a VR veteran, let me know if you've got any stories of where you got motion sick in the comments and any tips that you have for the VR newcomers out there. I'd love to know if you've got any good suggestions. Many in the VR industry are striving to make VR as comfortable as possible, as ideally in the future we want a system that anyone can access straight away without experiencing any motion sickness at all. One company I recently heard about called Ototech are developing a headband which sends vibrations to the vestibular system in your inner ear, essentially confusing it with vibrations to prevent it from sending signals to your brain. I look forward to checking something like this out in the future as even to this day I still can't play some games like Adrift or Detached due to the free movement in zero gravity. It's just too much for me. But leave a like if this video helped you out, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content and as always I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.